It's Q and A week. Question and answer. We've had uh, we've been asking people to send in their questions. We've got them. Uh, just before we go, uh, we're we're looking for a new sponsor, and we've kind of locked in on two. It's either Brian O'Keefe at Catch Magazine or Coca Cola. We're pretty sure O'Keefe has more money than Coca Cola, so it will probably be brought to you by Catch Magazine next week. So the question comes in from Gary Sema in Bend, Oregon. Great question, by the way. We had a bunch of good questions. This one was just really good. It says, when approaching an area you know holds fish, large fish, either observed or previously lost, what are you considering for your next opportunity? Specifically, what fly and why? So that kind of narrows it down when it says you've already seen the fish or already hooked it. So that pretty much tells you that you know, you know where you were when you hooked it before. But let's say you haven't hooked it. You just know there's a big fish there. <clears throat> so... The first concern I'm going to have is, I know the fish is there, I want to get in position first, I, you know, kind of, kind of basic stuff. I don't want to be standing, walking up on a bank, coming down to the fish. I'm going to get in a good position where I know I can get a multiple cast to cover all the water. That's critical. You never know where the fish is going to be. You go back, you see it one day, you don't know that fish is going to be there the next day. It could be 20 feet either direction. <clears throat> so, first thing I'm going to do is that. The second thing I'm going to take into uh, consideration is history. Have I, have you fished water like this before? Do the fish tend to come off the bank really fast? Or do they come out of the middle? You know, do I want to be in position for that? So kind of history tells you a lot. You know, have you seen water like this before? And it, it, they always came behind the boulder, in front of the boulder. So that's a little bit of, that's going to go through my mind. But more pertinent is the light condition. And that's, that could be time of day. Do I have a lot of light penetration or do I have a little? Do I have overcast? Uh, third thing probably be, is the water dark? Is the water off-colored for some reason? And that's going to dictate what fly I pick. So essentially, if it's a bright day, and again, back to that history thing. If that fish has hit your fly before, it's really hard not to go right back to that fly. But if you come there the next time and the water's completely different and completely different color, to the sky, you know, you were there one day, it's really bright, and today it's really dark, the water's a different color, that's gotta come into play too. So, first thing I'm gonna look at is the time of day and the light penetration. Is it a high light, you know, lots of penetration, bright sunny day, or is it a low light, and maybe the water's off color a little bit. So the first thing I always do is match my, my light conditions to the color of my fly. And the second thing I do is the same thing, but it's with the water. If the water's off color, I'm usually gonna go darker fly there too. Most people go just the opposite. If it's a dark day, they go bright, and they dark water, they think they got to go bright. I, I, that, that's not the case. So first thing I look at is if it's high light, I'm going to go a bright fly. And the last thing I'm going to look at is it a really is it a big fish or is it just a cute fish? I mean, is it one of those? Is it under two foot? Is it cute? Is it like 18 to 22 or something like still maybe eating minnow? You know, maybe eating fly type bug, fishy. You know, fish. Is it a bug eater still? In which case, it really helps to know your forage base. So if it's, a, if it's a giant fish, a 28 inch fish or something like that, I'm full on going with trigger fly, it's gonna be a big fly. If it's not a giant fish, it's just a really nice fish, I may be inclined to fish more like sculpiny or day stuff or something like that, a little bit more food, uh, food based. So first thing I'm gonna do is the light penetration. If it's a bright day, bright fly, dark day, dark fly, dark er fly. I'm going to sweep the water, I'm going to get in position so I can cover all the water. You never know, the fish, they tend to go back to the same kinds of water, but not, not necessarily the exact same spot. And then the last question he had was, <clears throat> a, a big fish follows you and he doesn't eat the fly, what do you, do you change your fly again or, do you, or how long do you wait? If a fish follows me and he doesn't eat it, it tells me two things. One, he's interested. He, you've, you've turned the page. He's, he's there. You've got his attention. Two, you didn't sell it. Something told the fish not to eat it. I generally start my, my retrieves fast. I almost always start really fast with my retrieves because I really like it when they come up and, you know, they just bust it on a fast one. So the first thing I do, fish comes up. He hasn't hit the fly. It's just followed my fly. I go back to exactly the same fly. I know he's, an inter he's interested. And I slow my retrieve, and I generally do a slow, jiggy-style retrieve like that. That's the first thing I do. If he doesn't show again, I might change the fly color, completely the opposite color, and try that. 
And then generally I'll wait it out for a minute. I'll, I'll step back, go, okay, where is he? Did he move? And then I'll go back and try a different fly in five minutes or so. Now, one other scenario. Fish comes up, he taps the fly, but he doesn't eat the fly. And you know he ate, you know, he, he hit it, but you know you didn't hook him. Then what I do is, what I said the first time, is I go back slow, but this time I go really slow. I take the exact same fly, I throw past where the fish hit my fly, I mend it downstream, and let it basically dead drift. And a lot of times the fish comes up, he slaps the fly, thinks he stunned it, he moves downstream looking for that fly. I don't impart any action at all, just let it dead drift down the river. So, thanks Gary for that. Gary's going to get a hat and a box of flies. They're all used flies I've had for around for a long time. That's not true. He's going to get a new box of flies and a new hat. Thanks for the question. Send, send yours and we'll get it on here in a month from now. Thanks.